In Arare, the seat of government and industrial hub of Zimbabwe, college students compete with peasants trying to eke a living by selling anything from sachets of water, newspapers to mobile phone cards, a measure of the decline of Zimbabwe's sunshine city under President Robert Mugabe. Those among Harare's 1.5 million residents who remember independence in 1980 would have known a city that was swept regularly at dawn. Public buildings gleamed with fresh paint and shop windows were so spotless that pedestrians would walk into them, according to urban legend. Now the streets are dirty and dusty, the roads littered with potholes. All of Zimbabwe's large and medium-sized companies have gone to the wall since 2000 and high court records show another 400 firms in Arare, Bulawayo and Gweru, Zimbabwe's three largest cities, are being wound up after going bust last year. Although Mugabe and his ZANU-PF party, which have ruled since independence from Britain in 1980, speak of plans for sovereign wealth funds and multi-billion dollar platinum smelters, the realities are on a much smaller scale. Street markets thrive because the cost of renting a shop is too high. John Tinashe, a mobile phone technician, says traders cannot make enough profit to survive. A World Bank report released in February says 46% of Zimbabwe's 13 million people run individual, small or medium-sized enterprises, a figure that contrasts with 17% in South Africa and 13% in nearby and impoverished Malawi. Benson Chapel owns a shop and sells mobile phones and accessories. He says sales are low due to competition from street vendors. The main downside to the new street economy is that informal traders do not pay tax, depriving Mugabe's administration of cash it desperately needs. The effect of the new economic order can be seen everywhere as large chain stores are closing and being replaced by little kiosks that can sell anything from imported electronics and clothes to lipstick and phone accessories. Police patrol the streets, but law enforcement often plays second fiddle to personal enrichment. The force annexed a car park outside Harare's main police station in 2011, in which officers run a flea market where clothes traders pay $10 a day for space. Edith Chower, who comes to sell her wares with her child, says the traders make 15 US dollars a day, but in most days, they don't make a lot because they are always chased out of the streets by the city authorities. In another sign of the cash squeeze facing the authorities, local media reports said that the government had deducted union fees from state teachers' salaries in February, but had failed to pass the money on to the unions. The central bank also estimates that as much as $2 billion, half of official bank deposits, is sloshing around the informal economy, again starving the financial system of capital that could be invested. Eric Robertson, an analyst, believes that the informal sector needs to be embraced because it has given employment to about 4 million people who otherwise would not have had any other means of income. So the formal sector is struggling against the competition now from the informal sector. The formal sector is not creating any employment and people consider themselves sort of employed if they're in the informal sector, but of course it's not a regular income and it's not a taxable income. So the government is struggling with this situation as well. They can't collect the tax revenues they need to run the country. Zimbabwe's economy shrank 45% in the decade to 2009 due to plummeting farming output and hyperinflation. It bounced back for three years after Zimbabwe dropped its own currency and adopted the dollar, but it has since stagnated as companies have failed to find the cash to grow on.